All right, good evening, my friends. This is the Spike Volleyball in the background, but this is something that was requested. This is my volleyball autobiography. Hopefully it will not be god-awfully boring, my friends. So, a long, long time ago, in 1984, there was a Summer Olympics in Los Angeles, sunny Los Angeles, California, the men's Olympic team came in with a lot of hype, my friends. They were seeking their first medal, gold medal, in Olympic volleyball history. So, they actually beat the number one in the world team, Brazil. Please note, the Soviet Union and Poland boycotted this Olympics. So, they had several star players. Craig Buck was an insane middle blocker and had an insane mustache. Karch Karai probably the best volleyball player ever, and Steve Timmons, who had a great spiky red haircut, were both amazing wing spikers, and volleyball fever, fever swept the nation, my friends. So, in 1988, they repeated as gold medal winners, this time against the Soviet Union, who was the number one team in the world at the time, my friends. That was in Barcelona, I believe, or was it Seoul? I don't remember. So, after the 84 Olympics, again, volleyball fever was sweeping the nation, and our grade school created a club league for 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. I happened to be in 5th grade. We had 12 kids show up. I'm sorry, no, we had 20 kids show up for a tryout in 5th grade. And I was short, I was only about 4'8 at the time. And I was told I was picked last among all the kids, so... Our coach was basically a friend, or a, a, co a schoolmate's mom was our coach, and she did not know much about volleyball, so I thought I was the best defensive player at the tryout, but alas, so 5th and 6th grade were just basically serve and pass rec ball, but in 7th grade we got a real coach, and we started the 4-2 offense, and in that league I started every game, and we had very bizarre substitution rules right there in that one, my friends. It was uh, basically, I started in the right front, uh, played a rotation there, went back to serve, went across the back, got subbed out, and that was it. So, <laughs> never took a swing at a set my entire grade school career. Uh, eighth grade, they had a city championship, and we won our league. Unfortunately, we came in second in the city championship, which kind of sucks. Our coach was not there the night of that match. And the guy he sent to replace him was god-awfully fucking terrible. So, they made a ton of substitution errors. It was just a clusterfuck all the way around. We probably could have won, but alas, oh well. Off to high school, my friends. I was still pretty short, about 4'11", 5 feet. But I was rounding into a pretty good athlete. Now, in grade school, I played, I played uh, soccer in the fall and baseball in the spring. And then volleyball in the spring. Didn't play any fall or winter sports, my friends. I'm not going to make the high school basketball team, that's for sure. So, uh, <laughs> The first few gym classes, we played flag football. And the gym teacher was like, you need to play JV football. And I laughed at him. I don't think my parents would have let me because I probably would have got broken in half. So... <laughs> The gym teacher then also urged me to run track in the spring, and I told him, no, I'm going to play volleyball. And he said, son, you're not even five feet. You're barely five feet tall. What are you doing playing volleyball? Run track, run the 200, run the 400, you'll be great. I said, no. I didn't make the volleyball team. We had nine freshmen and one junior, and we went 4-12. and 12. I did get some rotations as defensive specialist, and this was before the libero, of course. So that was pretty much it. Tenth grade, the track coach again begged me to run track, and I said, no, bitch. I'm 5'7 now. I'm amazing. My vertical leaping ability is about 45, 50 inches. I was a decent, or not inches, centimeters. And I was a decent hitter, but I did get some swings, but not many. So we went 8-8 eight and eight and did not qualify for the state tournament. My friends, unfortunate. 11th grade, a new coach. This is important later on. And I initially liked him at first. We learned the 6-2 offense. I was the third setter and rarely played, except for one game that the setter was being punished. 
Setter 2 was being punished because he was late for practice. And I played the whole game. I thought I played pretty well. Made a couple diving plays defensively. I mean, won the game easily, and I set the ball pretty well. But after that, I was benched again. <laughs> so that's when the resentment started building up for the coach because I was really kind of pissed. So we went 12-4 and four and had a legit chance at winning the state tournament. But our main middle blocker got drunk as fuck the weekend before and broke his arm. And our school scheduled the goddamn graduation on the same day, so two seniors were being selfish and wanted to go to graduation instead of the volleyball tournament, my friends. So we didn't make it out of pool play as the number three seed, which really sucked ass. So, in between 11th and 12th grade, me and a buddy of mine played basketball on an 8-foot rim. And that just immediately improved my vertical leaping ability. It, just, it was unbelievable, the difference. And we'll get to the why. I didn't know the why. Well, I knew kind of the why, but uh, there is a scientific reason for that. So, 12th grade, senior year, I was also the third setter. Rarely played. Only played defensive rotations. And I really fucking hated our coach at this point in time. But winning solves those problems, my friends. And we went 16-0 and and completely destroyed everyone in the state tournament. So I left high school as a state champion, my friends. So that cures a lot of wounds. Uh, that summer, I started playing pickup twos at an outdoor sand volleyball complex near my house. And me and my friend did well there. Learned a lot about setting high balls, setting in the wind, deep roll shots, uh, cut shots. Improved my defensive skill immensely and my speed. So I'd started into college. I needed two PE classes. So, of course, I took volleyball one and volleyball two. I had to take a written test for both of those, interestingly enough. And for some reason, a lot of uh, players from a different college's Junior varsity team, volleyball team, were in my PE class. I have no idea why. Maybe they were learning elementary algebra while they were there. So, who knows. Anyway, in college, I hurt my left knee for the first time. It wasn't a big deal. I was out for a couple weeks. Uh, got a job at a fast food place in the mall. And joined a intermediate league sixes team outdoor with the people I worked in the mall with. And it just so happened I was the best player on that team, and they featured me. So we often played with four or five players because adults are very inconsistently inconsistent about showing up for certain things that they say they're going to. And for the most part, I had to cover at least you know a third or half the court on defense all the time. Pretty much became expected of me. And I played in that league probably about four or five times. And eventually we won that league, and it was cold as shit the night we had to play our final match. It's 30 degrees and sleeting, but us and another team had to finish our league before they converted the facility to a ho their Halloween haunted house, my friends. So, and we got we won the league a few more times after that. Again, you get a free shirt. That's well, you, you paid for the shirt, but uh, you get a free shirt out of it. So, pat yourself on the back. So 1997 rolled around, my friends, a major setback. I had jaw surgery. I had my jaw wired shut for 12 weeks, and that took me six months to recover from. I lost 40 pounds and a ton of muscle mass. It was a huge, huge setback. So in 1998, I had a real job. Uh, I was in my early 20s, so I could build back muscle pretty quickly. Had a real job. And I had access to the early internet, as shitty as it was then. And I was able to acquire tons of fitness equipment. And it was using my employer's top-of-the-line workout facilities to build back my strength. I was doing it three, four, five times a week. And here's where I learned plyometrics, my friends. This is where you need to learn to improve your quickness and speed, lateral, forward, and your vertical jumping abilities. Plyometrics, the skill, the drills you do in plyometrics will help you immensely. If you want to know a book, I can recommend one that's absolutely fucking amazing for just about any sport. So, uh, anyway, the summer of 1998, I rejoined my intermediate league 
team and they had swapped out some of their weaker players for better players and they add me back into the equation. Our team was absolutely unstoppable. Uh, we were just consistent. We weren't really just powerful, but we were consistent. And I didn't have to carry this team anymore, so we had a lot of a lot of other contributors. And people started bitching that we should be in the intermediate or the advanced low league, and we never joined that league. So fuck them. Anyway, my sister-in-law came over to my parents' house while I was there. And we had dinner, and she invited me to sub for her outdoor team because my brother couldn't make it that night. Uh, and this was on a different day, and I went. I, I'd play anytime, I, anytime they want, anyone wanted me to. So this is in the advanced high league, and holy shit, these players were just on a different tier. But I didn't have any problem adjusting to them at all. I was setting, I was hitting, I was attempting to block <laughs> as best I can. And I finally got to play in a real offense again. We were running a 5 1 sometimes. And a kind of a. We we're kind of running a double 5 1. I set like two rotations or one rotation. I don't remember. After that one match, they invited me to play on the team permanently. And that include, included on their indoor teams. And I made a ton of connections from that because those people were really connected to the local volleyball community. So, very, very good for future. Uh, future endeavors my friends to make a lot of friends so 1999 my mom was telling me that there is a pickup game every friday at their church and maybe i should give it a shot since i you know, got the volleyball fever and i was like okay i'll go i'll check out these boomers playing rec ball and it'll be fine and there were there were a bunch of older players but they were fucking great i mean uh, I mean, they were older, but they were they were crafty older players, my friends. They were they had they a lot of really cheap. They knew a lot of really cheap tricks that they could do. And there was one lady. Uh, her nickname was Line Shot Lynn, and uh, that there was a reason why her nickname was Line Shot Lynn. But once she once I started blocking her on line shots all the time, she basically moved on. So year two thousand, moved out of my parents' house finally after graduating college uh, my connections landed me in two more leagues so i pretty much stopped playing outdoor volleyball entirely i also skinned the shit out of my elbow diving in sand which isn't pleasant my friends so between 2000 and 2004 uh, it's pretty much my golden age of volleyball i was playing three nights a week tuesday thursday friday it's pretty much where I hit the peak of my ability i played in tournaments i coached leagues we finished we finished fifth in an a-tier tournament once and we won an open tier reverse co ed tournament, which is a, a, a bizarre format, but one that I really excel in. And that's when the girls, it's a girls' height net, and uh, the girls can only spike and block. So the guys can serve, they're not allowed, not allowed to jump serve. They can serve, and they can pass, and they can set. So it's basically the girls' time to shine. And we had a girl, her name's Kim, and she was like six foot one. And she was just amazing. She could jump. She had a good vertical leap for a, a woman. And was just, uh, she brought the hammer. And we won pretty easy. And she was a devastating blocker on the woman's net. It was unbelievable. So, anyway, I uh, coached two teams. I coached a boys team. I coached a girls team. Uh, the, the girls team is a little bit more uh, tricky. <laughs> Because they're, the first time I'm coaching a girls game, they start picking on one of the girls, and she looks like she's going to cry. I'm like, holy shit, i got to call timeout. Hang on. <laughs> and I called them all in. I'm like, hey, guys, come on. Gals, whatever. Relax, all right? None of this is going to make a difference after the set's over. Just relax. Have some fun. Okay? That's all we're doing here. And she focused up. She made a good pass the next time. So, anyway, that's that. So, at the end of 2004... I was doing all right. I was getting a little on the flatty side, though. So, but I was still strong and fast. I had a great vertical leap. Again, I got abused as a blocker uh, against really good teams. But offensively, I was a fucking tool master. People hated playing against me because I'd either tool them or go around them, or just make make a little a tip shot that just was found found a spot. Uh, and my setting was was really really good still. Uh, I could I could. I could run any play that the U.S. men's Olympic team runs. Again, I'm not Olympic consistent, but I knew how to make all the plays. So that's that. 
2005, my friends, the very first game of the year. Not a good game, not a good year. Went up for a block on a guy. Still remember the guy, still remember the place, still remember the play. And he spiked the ball straight into my left ring finger and broke it. Doesn't sound like much, right? But that started a vicious uh, series of events, my friends. So went to the hand doctor. And he's like, okay, this fracture doesn't really bother me all that much. That's not that bad. But the problem is you got some lumps in your finger here. Are these bothering you? And I'm like, no, I never really paid attention to them. They don't hurt. And I have no range of movement problem. He's like, well, not yet. I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, this is a condition. I don't see it. I see it a lot in older people. Don't see it a lot in anyone your age. And it's called Dupatrin's Contracture aka trigger finger more often as it's known and basically your finger is going to start basically getting pulled into your palm until you can't even move it anymore unless we could do surgery and I'm like well that sounds like shit so I'm like okay let's do it so I had surgery I didn't expect it to be as drastic I have a huge scar on my hand still because they left me a it's probably about a 8 inch incision going in a zigzag fashion from the middle of the palm of my hand all the way to almost the end of my finger to clean out those tumors that were in my fingers, my friends. So that knocked me out for seven months, my friends. And in those seven months, I started gaining a lot of weight because I wasn't doing playing all that volleyball, my friends. And that's when my sleep started getting messed up. And my mom is like, son, get yourself a doctor. Call the physician referral line. Tell them what's wrong with you. They'll get you hooked up with a guy or gal. And they'll tell you what's wrong with you, and they'll give you something and whatever. So I went to about a dozen doctors, and none of them told me anything that was remotely close to what was happening. So I got diagnosed with fibromyalgia, anxiety, depression, chronic fatigue syndrome. God knows what else. And... <laughs> They gave me medication that didn't do jack shit. So basically, I stopped. I, I stopped filling the prescriptions after I took it up for a week, and nothing fucking happened. So once my hand healed all up, I started playing three or four nights a week again. And again, I'm still competitive. I haven't lost that much. And for some stupid reason, someone asked me to play indoor soccer with some of my coworkers, which that was a huge fucking mistake. I never should have done it. But I got hurt so much playing soccer, it's not even funny. I had broken ribs. I had a torn hip flexor. I had an Achilles strain. And my pain started flaring up in my left knee again. So I was gaining weight more and more, sleeping less and less. It didn't matter if I slept for four hours or 20 hours. I still felt awful every single day. I had to take four months off of volleyball in 2008 to rehab my knee. I had to go to physical therapy. And my therapist was an absolutely gorgeous woman named Rose, but she tortured the shit out of me. So once that was over, I got cleared, relatively pain-free. Uh, I started going back to playing two days a week of volleyball. But pretty much every day of my life at this point was the worst day of my life. So I had a knot that formed in my left knee the size of a baseball, which is called a baker's cyst. And my ability to run or jump had been severely impacted, even after the rehab. So my final league was in 2009. My final competitive league, I should say, it was in 2009. So I had amazing teammates, and they carried me through the season. Uh, luckily, the opposite position of me at the setter was very empathetic about my condition. So as long as they gave me a good pass, everything was good. But if I mean, my mobility was really compromised and my jumping ability was basically drifting away to nothing. So we, we made it to the league final, believe it or not. And I was playing against a team that had my former high school coach that I fucking hated. And, you know, we were friendly with each other. But still, I still was resentful of what he did to me in high school. And I knew we were playing them in the finals. So I took God off one of my ibuprofen, probably like four. No, I took no, I took four ibuprofen and then 
three Tylenol, uh, just to get just to get rid of as much pain as I could. So uh, we, I was I was running a five one for the most part. And when I was in the front row, I was basically set. They were basically passing left, which is very bizarre. But the guy that was on the other side, the guy that was on the front right, excuse me, was left-handed. So he's like, "I'd rather hit over here." I'm like, "Okay." And my middle was just an insane hitter. He was like six foot seven, and he could hit anything. He's like, "Just throw it up in the air. I'll get it. I don't care how you hit it. Just throw it up there. I'll get it." And sure, sure as shit, man, he he put it away. So. We won the first set fairly easily, and we were winning the second set. It was 24-23. I remember this point. I can replay this point back in my head a million times over. And uh, they were serving, and they uh, served. I don't know where they served, but I, they passed the ball about a little a little in front of the three-meter line. And I called a quick for my middle, who's 6'6". Instead of setting him a quick, though, I did a jump back set over the net. And they were running middle back defense, and it landed. It, I could not have placed the ball any better in the center of the hole in the middle of their defense. And then I turned around and looked, and there was my high school coach standing right in front of me in the middle front. And he watched the whole thing. <laughs> and then my teammates mobbed me, my friends. It's glorious. It's a glorious, glorious set. And that was my last competitive point in my volleyball career. I retired a champion, but in pain and miserable, my friend. So uh, let's not get too much into medical disinformation here. Oh, well, this is a fun part right here. 2010, I was basically miserable and walking around like a zombie. I met my wife on vacation and charmed her, apparently, and got her to move to Missouri with me where I lived. So she was going to get an apartment and go to school in Missouri, but she caught shingles, my friend, so I basically nursed her back to health, and she said, why don't I just stay here? And I'm like, yeah, that's that works. So, the in 2011, she's finally said, look, Stephen, there's something wrong with you. You need to get a sleep study done. And I looked into it, and my insurance were fucking dicks about it. They would pay for it. So I'm like, uh, I'll get it done later. And then eventually, about a month later, she said, look, I'm scheduling a sleep study for you. There is something wrong with you. And I said, okay, fine. And she's gonna, she said she'd pay for it. So uh, apparently I had a breathing disorder. <laughs> I had a breathing disorder that was causing my sleep problems the whole time. It wasn't fucking bullshit, anxiety, depression, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. So anyway... <laughs> I still was fat, though. And uh, I went to doctors about that. They gave me much bullshit advice that didn't work. So I decided to try to ride myself into shape on a bicycle. And guess what? That didn't work either. So let's just skip that soliloquy about that. So uh, moved to Florida in 2014 where it's warm. And I tried to do more dieting stuff with the diet doctors and basically fixed my diet completely 100% by doing the opposite of what a nutritionist told me. And she was not happy about that and told me how dangerous it was and that I should stop immediately. And I said, we're done here, bitch. And I walked out. Since then, I've basically lost almost all the weight I've needed to lose. Yeah, I ate like shit the last part of 2021 and basically have about 10 pounds to lose, but basically converted from... I, I did play a couple leagues, a couple of rec leagues in Tampa, and again, the, the fever's not there. My competitive juices in volleyball are, are over, unfortunately, except when I play the spike here. And volleyball inbound. <laughs> so... I basically converted to a cyclist. It's easier on my knees. Uh, my diet's been on point for seven years without heart issues or kidney failure like I was warned. Uh, I've had a couple setbacks in the last few years. Uh, sports hernia. Again, I thought I was fucking Superman and I was lifting a bunch of heavy shit in 2019. And I basically gave myself a sports hernia, which was fucking foolish in the first place. Again, I also kind of blame my older brother who shipped me a box that weighed like 90 pounds. And it was like the size of a fucking dresser drawer. 
Uh, so the sports sports hernia was a rough one. Uh, that's really it. I mean, uh, the spring I'm, I'm got to get my bikes back in shape and return to my 2018 form where I pretty much peaked. I did a 100 kilometer bike ride nonstop, no food in three hours and 40 minutes, my friends. So I'd like to get back to that point, but we shall see. Uh, if someone wants me to coach a volleyball team, I probably would. But uh, playing, mm, I think I'm pretty much done with it. But also, that's why I live vicariously through video games. So if anyone still made it through here, you're a trooper, my friends. Uh, and if you like this content, hit subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment, tell me I'm god awfully boring. What the hell? So <laughs> that's it. Thanks for watching. If anyone made it here, have a good day and have a good night.